Hi, I'm Ellen Kleckner. I'm the executive director here at the Iowa Ceramic Center and Glass Studio, which is a community nonprofit art space based here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I'm also one of the artists that creates here in the studio. I'm really excited today to talk with you about um, some projects that we've created for you to be able to take home and actually create at home. So um, we're gonna talk about um, painting this square. We have some incredible resident artists here at the studio and they have created on our pottery wheels some cups. These cups are all handmade so they're all a little bit different um, but they're generally what I would call maybe an, an 8 to, um, to 12 ounce cup and they're all going to be um, in a white clay body. So a white clay body means that once we fire it, it'll come out looking very much like the background will be white paper. So we put together these kits, which are um, a hand thrown cup that has been bisque fired. When something is bisque fired in ceramics, it means that it has become hard, but it's still porous. So if there's water, you can see right there that water is actually being absorbed into the clay. So it's hard, but it's still porous. We will fire it one additional time with a clear glaze on it in what's called a glaze fire. That'll be a hotter temperature that will take it all the way up and it will um, make the clay no longer porous. And you'll be able to drink whatever you like out of it, lemonade, or um, tea, anything in between. The cool thing is we've actually developed a project that you will be able to take home the Bist cup. You'll be able to paint with what we call our under glazes. You'll bring it back here to our studio in Cedar Rapids. Um, we'll put a clear glaze on it and then we'll put it through our kilns and you'll be able to pick it up. Like one of these fun cups right here that we had some of our community members already make. In the kit that we put together, there are going to be three underglazes. The three underglazes are primary colors. Primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. The reason why we picked these colors are because you can mix these colors together to get additional colors. An underglaze is kind of like a ceramic paint. You're able to paint it on. You could even wash it off if you want. But once we fire it hotter in our kilns, which are like electric ovens, it actually becomes permanently set in place. So you won't be able to wash it off and it'll be there forever. So it's a really cool way to be able to decorate and really make these cups your own. If you mix together yellow and blue, you're gonna get green. If you mix together red and blue, you'll get a really nice purple. And if you put together red and yellow, you'll get an orange. What I like to do is get some little additional cups and mix my new colors in these. I'm gonna mix a green because green's my favorite color. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow put it in the cup and I'm going to take a little bit of blue and put that in this cup. And then I'm going to mix them together. We'll see, we'll start to see a really nice kind of green color, dark green come out. If I wanted a lighter color, I'd use a little bit more yellow, a darker color, a little bit more blue. And now I'm gonna mix a purple as well. Purple is red and blue together. And I'm gonna rinse out my brush here so that I'm not mixing colors too much. I'm gonna get a nice, rich purple. With just three colors, you can make the whole rainbow. Now that I have the five colors that I want to work with, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we design our cup. 
The really nice thing about working on a cup like this is you could even take a, um, a simple soft pencil and start to create lines to figure out where you want your pattern to be. Or a technique that I like to really like to really do is draw. So I like to plan out what my pattern is going to be before I actually go and work on the cup. So I'm just going to really simply draw the shape. Nothing fancy, but I'm going to decide whether or not I want to do a horizontal pattern or a vertical pattern just by sketching on my cup. And it's nice because if I don't like it, I'm not messed up. I'm just working right here. So I'm drawing lines to kind of help decide what I want to do. And I think actually that what I'm going to do is I've, I kind of like this idea, rather than just the vertical stripes or the horizontal, I'm gonna do kind of a combination of the two. And a really classic thing in terms of design is a two-third, one-third rule. So a lot of times people like to do one-third a design and the other part two-thirds. It's just one of those kind of basic tricks that our eyes like, rather than dividing something directly in half, kind of choosing which direction you like to go. So I'm going to base my ideas off of this design. In the kits that we made, we have two different sizes of paintbrushes, but you might have more at your home that you want to use, and that's perfectly fine. The paintbrushes that you're using, they leave marks similar in a way that a fine tip marker would be different than a really fat tip marker. So one tip that I like to tell people to do is play around with your brush and just some water. So I'm getting a little bit of water on this brush and a white piece of paper, and it's probably kind of hard to see, but I can actually get an idea for the mark that this brush will make by just using water. This one is gonna be a lot bigger. As you can see, these two brushes, one's pretty thick and one's very thin. I'm going to choose which one of those I want depending upon the mark that I want to make on this cup. You want to make sure that you have your brushes wet. This is my cup of water before you start to work with this with these under glazes. It's going to allow you to basically flow better over the surface or of the cup. I'm going to start, I'm going to go vertical and then horizontal. I'm going to be painting backwards here, so I hope that this works for you. I'm going to do sort of little check marks instead of just dashes, I'll say. I'm going to go a little bit higher up and before I get to that space that I'm going to do the vertical. Going back to the sketch that I made earlier, I have those horizontal drawings. I'm going to do some verticals here too. But instead of doing it in the same blue, I'm going to pick a contrasting color. So you'll be able to see the difference in the two pattern marks. I'm also going to choose to use the wider brush. So I'm going to make sure that I have a wet brush and I'm going to take some nice fat stripes and go all the way up. Remember, this is white clay. So the background will be white. What the colors that you see here will be fairly true to the colors that you see once it's been clear glazed and once it comes out of the kiln. Colors just get a little bit deeper and they do change a little bit and that's kind of part of the magic of ceramics. Another kind of fun um, way to experiment with this could be I've soaked this cup in water for about five to ten minutes. 
So it's really, really full of water. Because remember, when it's bisque, it's still porous. So I'm gonna do a watercolor technique. Because it's really wet, the, water, the colors will flow over the top of this very quickly. I'm also gonna work with it upside down because I just think, why not? Kind of something fun to do. Before you saw when I put these stripes on, the color and the line stayed very solid or it stayed very true to where I put it. With this piece being soaked in water, it's actually gonna to start to move the colors around quite a bit. You see kind of this watercolor effect that's happening? And you're gonna to wanna to do this in a space that you could actually let it sit and dry. It might take about an hour or two for it to dry, but if you do try to pick it up and move it um, before it's really dried, you're gonna um, start to kind of smudge around the clay or the colors, which will be fine. But you'll see how the edges are less crisp than the dry one. You have, they start to bleed and kind of move out. This is really one of my favorite things to do. Just really interested in getting color applied to the surface and getting things put on top so and if I wanted to this would be a space to maybe even mix just directly on here the red and the yellow to make that purple directly on the surface and it kind of it's very wispy and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some yellow. So you actually don't need very much of this underglaze to go pretty far. And where these colors are starting to mix, now I'm starting to get a green. So it's a really kind of cool color combination. Now, I'm gonna to try to carefully pick it up and I'm gonna just let this one sit and dry right over here. Now, I like to tell people a cool thing about working on a cup and painting a cup rather than just a flat piece of clay is that it's three dimensional and you get to work all the way around. So you could go all the way around with the same pattern or you can choose to mix the pattern up depending upon what side of the cup you're on. I've actually started this pattern already, which is just a little loop-de-loops. And I did this with the larger brush. I'm gonna choose to then do the same pattern on the other side, but just switch to a smaller brush. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the purple because that's a color that I really love. Once again, I'm doing this backwards, so bear with me here. And this is just loop-de-loops. So any space that you see that's white, this area here, it's gonna just be pretty much that same color, white, when we're done clear glazing it. The color will be a little bit more saturated and you can really put this anywhere. It's a cool thing about underglazes. You can definitely wipe off part of it if you want. If you don't like something, you can clean it right off and wash it off. But then once we put it in our kiln and it gets to be um, heated up to be about 2000 degrees, it's gonna become permanently attached to the surface of that um, ceramic cup and it'll have a really beautiful clear glaze over the top. So please look at our website, iowaceramiccenter.org to get some more information about our different um, projects and thank you for watching.